Good evening, everyone. It is 7.15, and this is the Committee of the Hall meeting for November 21st, 2022. Will the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Wu? Here. Mr. Evans? Here. Ms. Hersey? Here. Ms. Colasetti? Here. Ms. Bishop? Here. Ms. Wilkin? Here. Mr. Quisenberry? Here. Mayor Marlin? Here. At this time, uh, we'll move, um, have a motion for approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any um, sub substantive changes? Okay, will the clerk please call? Oh, I'm sorry, we can do this vote from all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any um, objections? All right, next, additions to the agenda. Are there any additions? Mayor Marlin. This isn't an addition, but I would request that item E, which is the ARPA update, be moved to take place after number five, a new business. Yeah. Okay. Staff report itself. Yes. Are there any objections? Okay, we'll move it to after the resolutions is that what you're talking about after the new business yes okay moving on uh, are there any we have a pre uh, presentation from uh, for proclamation small business saturday <laughs> Thank you, Darius White. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm happy to present the Small Business Saturday proclamation for the city of Urbana by Mayor Diane Marlin for Saturday, November 26, 2022. Uh, just some general information. Small Business Saturday was funded by American Express in 2010. It takes place each year on the Saturday following Thanksgiving. American Express started the shopping event in the effort to boost spending at small businesses during the holiday season and help establishments remain open during the recession. Urbana has over 2,000 businesses that we are extremely thankful for. Within the vi video, we had the opportunity to record portions of the proclamation at several businesses in the community. El Progreso Grocery Store, Beau Visage Spa, International Galleries, Pards Western Shop, and Beer Culture Barbershop and Gallery. Um, as we all know, the holidays are all about giving, and the best gift we can give our local businesses is our support. Without any further ado, Urbana Small Business Saturday Proclamation. A proclamation by the mayor of the city of Urbana, Illinois. Whereas the city of Urbana, Illinois celebrates and supports our 2,000 local businesses and the contributions they make to our economy by creating jobs and providing opportunities throughout our community. And whereas, according to the United States Small Business Administration, there are 32 and a half million small businesses in the United States. Small businesses represent 99.7% of firms with paid employees, are responsible for 62% of net new jobs created since 1995, and employ 46.8% of the employees in the private sector in the United States. And whereas residents understand the importance of supporting the business community on Small Business Saturday and encourage others to shop small at independently owned retailers. And whereas the city of Urbana supports local businesses through tax increment finance districts and incentives and programs throughout the community. And whereas 58% of shoppers reported they shopped online with a small business and 54% reported they dined or ordered takeout from a local restaurant, bar, or cafe on Small Business Saturday in 2021. And whereas Urbana, Illinois supports local businesses that create jobs, boost our economy, and strengthen our small city, big life community.
Now, therefore I, Diane Wolf Marlin, Mayor of the City of Urbana, Illinois, do hereby proclaim November 26, 2022 as Small Business Saturday in the City of Urbana. And I'd like to thank Ibrahim for putting this video together and staff members Darius White, Bridget Broyhan, Kate Levy for coordinating logistics and of course our small businesses for allowing us to come into their establishments. That was so nice. <laughs> okay, now it's time for public input. Is there any public input tonight? Step up to the microphone please and you have five minutes to speak your piece. No one? Okay. Move. Huh? Public input. Yes, I've got email to read. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, and again, we've received plenty of emails that will be in the minutes, um, and I'll just read the one that someone asked on a follow-up to be read aloud. Um, Dear Urbana City Council members, I am writing in this email in support of the extension request for redevelopment of Hotel Royer. Successful completion of the hotel is critical for downtown businesses. The developer has made good progress. The delays they are experiencing um, are not unexpected given supply chain issues. I experienced similar delays with this timeline during the initial phases of renovation of the Cohen building, uh, also done with a redevelopment agreement, which now includes the Sarkura Japan, uh, Japanese restaurant. Great things are beginning to happen in downtown Urbana. Please don't let a short delay change that. Sincerely, Dan Maloney. Thank you, Grace. Are there any other emails that need to be read into public input tonight? Okay, moving on. Staff report. Um, not doing that. New business. <laughs> okay, so we have a new business. Number one, ordinance number... 2022-11-047 and ordinance amending a redevelopment agreement with Icon Hospitality LLC, the Royer Hotel Royer. And we have Stephanie and our illustrious developers coming forward. <laughs> that won't that won't help our people watching online. Right here. No, you can sit here. Good evening. Is that on? Okay, thanks. Um, tonight we're here requesting an amendment to the redevelopment agreement with Icon Hospitality for the Hotel Royer. Um, due to the ongoing impact of the pandemic, the developer of the Hotel Royer, Icon Hospitality, has requested to extend the project occupancy date of the hotel from December 31st, 2022 to August 31st, 2023. The pandemic has caused ongoing supply chain disruptions for all industries and lead times for materials and equipment have been lengthened substantially, thereby bringing about this request. The original redevelopment agreement for the former Landmark Hotel was passed in June of 2019 between the City of Urbana and Markson's affiliates. This agreement outlined the city's investment of $5.5 million in the project via a bond issuance upon the developer meeting all of the requirements. Revenue to pay the bond for the hotel investment would be realized through tax increment from the increased assessed value of the renovated property, food and beverage taxes, hotel motel taxes, and a new boutique hotel tax. In 2020, Icon Hospitality requested a one-year extension from the original commencement date to July 2021, with a corresponding extension of the 18-month project timeline to completion. Due to the unforeseen circumstances that arose with the pandemic uh, and the shelter-in-place order, the council agreed that an ex that original extension was well-founded and passed the ordinance to amend an agreement on November 2nd, 2020. This ordinance also acknowledged the assignment of the agreement from Markson's affiliates to Icon Hospitality. 
Renovation on the hotel has been steady since the commencement of work in July 2021. Exterior work is nearing completion with the hotel signage being installed this month, and it looks great. The general manager of the hotel has been hired. Promotional campaigns are underway with a listing on the Hilton Hotel Tapestry website and regional billboards, which will, we're told will be going up soon. A search is also underway for a sales manager who once hired will begin selling the property to conference hosts and event promoters. The redevelopment project would result in the most significant renovation this historic property has seen in over 37 years. The proposed project would return the property to its highest and best use, generate new tax revenues, bring visitors and commerce to downtown area, and restore this iconic and historic building in the heart of Urbana. Staff has evaluated this request and agreed that the economic impact of the project to the downtown and the community at large merits approving the attached ordinance to extend the project occupancy date to August 31st, 2023. And we have representatives of the hotel here today. I'm just gonna ask them to introduce themselves if that's okay, and we're all glad to answer any questions you might have. So. Turn the mic on and pull it forward so that you Got can it. actually <laughs> we can you. hear you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Horace Purvez. I'm the Chief Financial Officer of Marquee Ventures and Icon Hospitality. Good evening, everyone. I'm Purvez Usman. I'm CEO of the company. Um, my whole team is here with me, and everybody will introduce as she said that, I'll talk a little bit more, is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> Our general manager, we already hired, is next to me, uh, Tony. He is the doctor, he's a doctorate degree. He managed many resorts in USA. He has the experience of uh, running many resorts, Hilton, Marriott, and we brought him here to run this hotel. This is a beautiful hotel, uh, which you might have seen. The, it was the background of Mayor Diane. Uh, <clears throat> to me, it looks beautiful. I think Urbana should be proud of this. Uh, I'm proud, and our team is proud. And our director um, of operation and development, Joseph Pryor, and our director of engineering, Jim is also here, and they will introduce themselves too. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Tony Naphan. I'm the general Pull it manager. Forward so we can hear you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Tony Naphan. I am the general manager for the Hotel Royal. I am very excited, very honored to be here and to be also part of this very exciting project. We are looking for your support. Good evening, everyone. My name is Joseph Pryor. I'm the Corporate Director of Operations and Development uh, for Marquee Ventures, uh, Icon Hospitality. Um, I've been the person who's been uh, pretty much overseeing the project for uh, over a year, 19 months. Um, really excited, very proud of uh, the outcome that we so far have achieved. Um, thank you. Uh, I'm James Rylick, uh, Director of Engineering. Okay, so can I, any questions for our guests? Mary Alice. Hi, thank you so much for everybody coming and, uh, and being here present today, I really appreciate it. I, I, uh, I like the amount of detail that you provided in terms of the completion. I think it's very helpful for us to understand how much effort uh, and time that you've already put into the project. I did have one clarifying question as I look at some of the um, percentages and so forth. So hotel demolition, 100%, that's, it's done. What you guys are gonna demolish has been demolished. Um, but then you have things like floor finishes, 100% ready for delivery. And I didn't know what that meant. So I was hoping you could clarify what that meant. Yeah, um, so one of the concerns is supply chain and making sure that we have the materials that we need uh, to reach completion of the hotel. Mm -hmm. So materials like the floor finishes, materials like the uh, wall finishes, those have been ordered, completely produced, uh, and are ready to install. So that's why we have uh, marked those as 100% complete. Okay, so you have the materials in Correct. hand is what you're saying. Correct. But they're the not actually physically in the building. I mean, they're not put 
to where they're supposed to be in the building, like the floors haven't been laid, for example? Certain materials have uh, started, but certain materials are still uh, to be laid, like flooring. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Grace? Thank you. Uh, thank you all for... Uh, being here with us tonight and for taking on this big endeavor and also thank you for sticking with it through the delays because I understand you could have um, turned away from these obstacles and left it halfway completed so I appreciate that you're sticking with it as well. Um, I did just want to clarify um, with the city and the developers here about the funding um, because in the request from you all, you mentioned TIF funds and uh, 5.5 million in TIF funds. And I just wanted to clarify that that is not the case, that a portion of this will be from TIF funds. And I'll let you explain the details I don't quite understand, but that that's not quite the accurate interpretation, that this is not all TIF funds. That may be one of multiple sources, mostly through bonds. And if you could just clarify a little bit more about the funding. Sure. Um, the payment to the hotel buyer will be a bond that the city issues after completion, and then the city will be paying off the bond with revenues from TIF generated by the new property because their uh, equal assessed value is going to go up because of the renovations they've made, as well as food and beverage tax, hotel motel tax, and a new boutique hotel tax that they know we're going to be um, creating in the next few months before they open. Uh, James. Yeah, I just want to clarify that, that we have a projection for how long it will take to collect those funds and pay that back. But if the hotel is very successful and very busy, they could be retired earlier. If, it, if it's not, hopefully not, um, it could take a little bit longer. Is that correct? Correct. I believe the estimate was 10 years to pay back. And if the hotel goes gangbusters and is full all the time, then we'll definitely pay that bond off early. Thank which you. is what we all hope for. Thank you. I also wanted to mention thank you for coming out and for the information that you've shared with us on the reason for the need for this extension. It, it's pretty clear that when we uh, made the extension previously, when a previous council did that, actually, I, w I wasn't here, um, we didn't realize all of the impacts that might happen. So I think it's, um, I appreciate you bringing this. I also appreciate uh, the information that's been shared in the packet. I would urge any of the public that is watching, if you haven't had a chance to click on City Council on the city website, you can look at this packet. There are pictures, not only renderings, but actual pictures of some things that have been done, and it looks marvelous. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your petition. Does anyone else have any questions for our, our guests? Chandra. I'd make a motion. Go ahead. Um, I, uh, um, I move ordinance number 2022-11-047, ordinance amending a re redevelopment agreement with Icon Hospitality LLC, the Hotel Royer, um, to city council with recommendation for approval. Second. Okay, that was Chandra that moved, made the motion, and Jaya that seconded. Okay. Discussion. Chris. So I've decided um, not to use any portion of my brain, and therefore this vote will be what's called a no-brainer. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jaya? Oh, Mary Alice, okay. I I, I just wanted to say something because I was on the city council when we approved the original extension and um, I, I think it's safe to say that nobody knows what the implications of COVID have been, not only at the stay at home, um, but also the supply chain and the labor shortages and so forth. Um, so it, it does make sense to me. I mean, we certainly couldn't have predicted that when we did the first extension, um, nor could we have either predicted how long it would take for some of those things to rectify itself. So. I think that um, this makes a lot of sense. I'm very pleased with the amount of work that has been done. One of the questions I get, aside from roads and trees, is what's happening over at the Lincoln Hotel? Um, so, so that is like number three question that comes into my door a lot because people are very invested and very excited about this opening. So for those reasons, I support this. Thank you. Jaya. Thanks, Trace. 
Um, just also wanted to echo what's already been shared. I think it's a very reasonable accommodation. We are still living in a very challenging time and seeing the progress um, you know, that was shared with council um, when this was first brought to our attention that an extension might be needed and then seeing it in the packet is really wonderful. And you know, I, I work in the Lincoln Square Mall and so getting to see the changes to the facade happening um, couldn't be happier. So um, very reasonable accommodation and happy to support this. James. Yeah, I, I'm going to be happy to support this too. Um, and it, it's really not lost on me that the hotel originally opened in 1923 and now it looks like it will be opening in 2023, a hundred year anniversary. Those, those kinds of numbers and that kind of correspondence uh, cannot just be luck. I think that's, it's, it's something to look forward to. Um, I, I've lived in this community um, since 1989 and I certainly have a lot of good memories of events and dinners and get-togethers uh, at, at this hotel. So I will look forward again to it becoming part of the core of Urbana, uh, where events happen, where people gather, where we celebrate. So thank you. Grace? Uh, thank you. Thanks again. Appreciate the work you guys are doing. I am in support of this. And I had a clarifying point of order question because um, I see the ordinance and then there's also this amendment to the agreement that it looks like we're not voting on, but that's included. I was wondering if we could have clarification on that. I don't have any concerns about it. It seems reasonable things to clarify the agreement, but I wasn't sure if it looks like that's not a voting item. It's just the extension. You're voting on a, an ordinance to authorize the mayor to enter into that second amendment with the developer. The amendment doesn't include the extension, right? That's just clarifying stuff. The no, ordinance it itself it's, is it's the articulated right? a little bit differently because of the way the agreement is worded. So you'll you'll see. Um, oh yeah, 26 instead of 18 months or yes. something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we're not voting on that. Just the ordinance extension and the authority to make the amendments outside of council, right? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Chandra. I just want to also commend staff for all their work and 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 perseverance and getting someone to take this project on, um, and also thank you for taking this project on. Um, when when I met with uh, economic development discussing this, it, I mean seeing it on the website and like looking through other tapestries and seeing what we'll be getting, it was very exciting. And I'm looking forward to um, Urbana guests and residents being able to experience the magic you'll create it. So thank you. Yes, Mayor. <laughs> I just want to add my thanks for your persistence and vision. And I was on the city council when we had a previous uh, agreement, which didn't work out so well. So this is a particularly wonderful point to be at to see how close we are to actually bringing bringing this vision to a reality and to restoring this hotel to um, the destination that it was. And I've been in this town long enough to remember when it was a destination and something that we could be proud of. And we're very close to that point again. So thank you so much. And we're looking forward to the grand opening. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, too. OK, Ms. Clerk. Ms. Wu. Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Ms. Hersey? Yes. Ms. Colasetti? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Wilkin? Yes. Mr. Quisenberry? Yes. Okay, and that motion that passes, the ordinance passes, and thank you gentlemen for coming and speaking to us and letting us know what the, um, how everything is coming out right, right now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate And you will be proud of this product. Oh. I assure you. <laughs> All right. Next, we have a re resolution number 2022-11-087R, a resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement for a justice assistance grant. And that's being brought by Jack. Uh, <laughs> Matt Bain, thank you. <laughs> I 
I think we can move some of these chairs out of the way. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Matt. So I'm here tonight on behalf of the police department and uh, requesting the council to approve this resolution, uh, accepting the grant and the upcoming associated budget amendment for the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant. Um, the Champaign Police Department has applied for and was awarded this grant, which we are a sub-grantee of. Um, the Urbana Police Department's amount that they are receiving is $12,548.06. Um, we are going to use that at the Urbana Police Department for a department-wide um, active shooter training that we have not had for about three years. And any other information is in the memo I provided, but I will answer questions if you have any. Any questions are okay, Grace. Thank you. Um, thanks for the presentation. I appreciate seeking out grants for some of this important training. I uh, was wondering if you could um, explain what this sentence means, that there's no required certifications of compliance with the federal laws related to immigration matters as previous federal awards. I can tell you. Oh. Go ahead. Or, or, or Rich can. Oh, I didn't know Rich was back there. I'm going to give Matt a lifeline on this one because he doesn't know about this. So in previous years' grants, the federal government required that agencies that took the money certify themselves as being compliant with federal law related immigration matters. A couple of years ago, the federal government changed the language, um, and we at one point were not in compliance with it, but we now are. So that's what that language means. Thank you. And. Um, uh, you could also provide a little background. The last whereas clause um, says that the city of Champaign and Champaign County desire to apply for these JAG funds to individual projects, and uh, the city of Urbana has declined to participate. Can you clarify a little bit what, what that means, the individual projects versus this being the training? I'm just confused on what that means. And if we need to... Um, circle back next week that's also understandable i think that's a typo it should we previously declined a grant i think it was was it last year carol do you remember or was it the year before yeah so i think it's a typo each each agency has to provide uh, budget information and budget narratives for their jag money so part of it's a typo and part of it is that everybody's sort of doing their own thing with money Okay, so we did, it's just irrelevant. That'll be scratched out on the final one? Yeah. Is that right? My, okay. Yeah, my guess, is, my guess is that's a typo. I don't know why they would say that we decline it because we're not. We're asking you to accept it. Okay. And then last one was um, Section 5 of this agreement, the fund restriction. It says that these funds will not supplant existent budging funds. And I'm struggling with language too much to know what that quite means in the context of saying that the financial impact saying that this grant is intended to supplement funding versus not intended to supplant funding. Um, and I don't know if you have anything else to add or clarify on that. Matt, I can take this one too. <laughs> so supplanting is a concept where you essentially play a shell game with money. Okay, so you accept a grant and you pay for something that you've already got budgeted. So essentially what you're saying is, I'm not going to play a shell game with this money. Does that make sense? Yes, and when we're saying supplement, but meaning that this is, we wouldn't otherwise do this training and all of the money for the grant is going to the training and that does cover all the training or is there still some coming out of other city funds. No, you've got it exactly correct. That's it. Okay, so that's supplementing, not supplanting. No, right? the word or is what? supplant. That's what they, I, I don't know why, maybe Sheila can help on this, but mm. yeah, the word is supplant. Okay, I'll think on that one. Thank you. Uh, Mary Alice. Um, so the, so the $12,000, uh, does that cover overtime or i mean okay so we won't be seeing a, a bump in our overtime numbers because this will cover that yes that this will cover the the training will have to be done on overtime right exactly. so that 
that will and we'll we'll have to have two sessions of it, one right. for each team. So yes, yeah. that that again, it's estimated that I think it was uh, about eighty nine hundred dollars will be just for the training, and that will that will cover everything that I can estimate. Okay, thank you, Chandra. How soon will the training take place? We are shooting for um, February. Okay. And where? To be determined. Okay. We would ideally like to get a school, but mm -hmm. a school during the week is very hard to come yeah. by, so we are looking at um, possibly some local churches. Could be when school's out of session in February. There's a couple presidents having birthdays or something in February. <laughs> Just an idea. <laughs> Anyone else? I think those are also holidays for them, though, too. I'll make a motion. Okay, I'm ready for you. All right, I will move to City Council with a recommendation for approval resolution number 2022-11087R, resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement for a justice assistance grant JAG. I'll second. Okay, thank you. Mary Alice moves and Jaya seconds. Discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Moving on. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. All right. Next resolution number 202211 well, 11 11-11-088R, a resolution approving the 2022 Sanitary Sewer Intergovernmental Agreement to replace the 1992 IGA, and it is our friend Tim Cowan. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Hello, Tim. Hi. Uh, I'm just here. Uh, last week, uh, myself and Brad Bennett came and did kind of a presentation to kind of prompt uh, some of this stuff. Uh, the overview is this is a 30-year-old joint agreement between us, uh, Savoy, Champaign, and UCSD, um, now including U University of Illinois as well, um, to really collectively work together on our sanitary sewer network, which is interconnected with them. Um, during our presentation, Brad gave some of the history of, you know, how this came to be originally, and then I gave uh, a little bit of an overview on some of the primary changes with this. Um, for the most part, the bulk of this is updating just our practices and procedures that have uh, changed over 30 years of time of how we meet and how we revise our standards. And the big changes were really tied to the, the idea of getting UIUC b to become an actual signatory to this agreement, where in past they were kind of just participating in kind um, previously. Um, and I would just welcome any questions about it. Anyone have questions? Mary Alice. All right, so bear with me. I, I, I was reading this, and I was going through all the stuff with Bonville here. Um, and there was a whole bunch of stuff that I think historically uh, had to be done in order for them to become part of the sanitary district. Is there anything new? Because did I miss something, or has that just all been done so far for Bonville? That's that's all been done for the most part. Uh -huh. So that 2002 agreement, that's where everything got hashed out with Bonville to become part of the network, and they're essentially treated as a connection to the city of Champaign. Okay. Any, thank other, you. Mm -hmm. any other questions? Okie dokie. Um, this will be a voice vote. All in favor. I mean, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I need a motion. <laughs> I'll, sorry. Move, I'll move resolution number 2022-11-088R, a resolution approving the 2022 Sanitary Sewer Intergovernmental Agreement to replace the 1992 IGA. Second. Okay, Chandra moved uh, for the motion, moved the motion, and Jaya has seconded discussion. Grace. Thanks. Thanks, Tim, for the update. I appreciate um, especially having the presentation the week before to kind of take things in, and I really appreciate your summary of the revisions update, mm -hmm. making that clear in the beginning. Um, I definitely support having this agreements in writing. I think that our sanitary sewer system is a really important one, so appreciate the effort in making sure that we're all on the same page and maintaining standards. Thanks. Mary Alice. Yeah, I, I agree with Grace. I think this is a very dense 
uh, document, <laughs> and so having that update last week was really helpful. There was quite the colorful history there. Yeah. Um, and let's not have a repeat of what happened in the 80s. So this is uh, <laughs> let's keep the next 30 years working. That's, that's all I have to o say. Only forward. Moving forward. Anyone else? Okay. So this is a vo voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any op op opposition? Okay, and this has been moved forward to City Council for approval. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Okay, next, our resolution number 2022-11-089R, resolution authorizing the acceptance of a DCEO grant, that's Illinois Law Enforcement Alarm System Rehabilitation Project. And Sheila is here to help us understand this. Hello, Sheila. Good evening. Um, thank you. The city of Urbana received notice from the state of Illinois that during the um, General Assembly funding this year, they awarded $3 million um, to be passed through the city of Urbana to ILEAS for rehabilitation of their building. And so, um, we have allocated 2,975,000 to the rehabilitation project and kept 25,000 for the administrative costs for Urbana staff to implement the, the reporting and um, grant process. Are there any questions for Ms. Dodd? Chandra. Um, rehabilitation as far as like uh, construction? Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Great. And Jim Page is here from ILEAS to answer any questions, specific questions about what type of uh, rehab they're looking at doing. Sure, I would like to hear about it. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> we. This is the old Champaign County Nursing Home. Uh, we moved in there in 2008 and at the time had a 3.2 million dollar grant to convert that nursing home from a nursing home into a training center for public safety and homeland security um, it's been fine for 18 years but our operation has expanded so much and the training has become so wide uh, we now have our urbana adult education classes for certified nursing assistants there Head Start uses us. It's not just law enforcement. We've really expanded our footprint in the training uh, arena. <clears throat> we don't do the training. We host it. We operate the building. Uh, so uh, we're uh, working with the General Assembly, uh, work with Senator Scott Bennett, got $3 million uh, put in the uh, budget this year, and somehow they put in the city of Urbana to get the grant for us. We've been working together. I mean, I used to work here. I think we have a good re working relationship, and uh, uh, you folks are taking, in, as part of this agreement, 25000 uh, for administrate management and administrative fees. Uh, we're going to use the other $2.9 million for really exciting stuff like asbestos abatement that has to be done. Uh, we abated asbestos in the areas of the building that we're in now, but we're expanding into other wings. We have to do asbestos abatement. There's HVAC upgrades that have to happen. Uh, the parking lot needs rehabilitated. Uh, there's nothing really fancy with this, but uh, things have to be done. And we're going to, and when this project is over, we're going to be seeking further money to build out uh, the rest of the building. But we have to get the foundation of the building fixed before we uh, move into any improvements past that. James. Yeah, thank you for coming tonight. Um, uh -huh. Do you own the building or no, do you Cham rent it from Champaign County? Champaign County, we, we, are, uh, we have a long-term lease. We've had a lease with them for 18 years. At, no, 2007 to now 15 years. Okay. And we're in the process of signing a 10-year extension on that. Uh, and they're part of the uh, design process. And did, did the original funding to rehab it for your use come through the city of Urbana or did it go no. through the it Champaign the, County? Or it the was a federal homeland security grant that came through the Illinois Emergency Management Agency oh, okay. to ILEAS. We subgranted it to the county to do the work. This one came differently. So 
I'm, uh, I'm not asking you to explain how it happened this way, but <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just curious. Yes, because that's, I, that's I how I seem it to recall that it was the county's property that it you is. were releasing. Okay. And we have discussed with them, uh, not in any detail, uh, ownership at some point. But right now, the grant requires, correct me if I'm wrong, that we have at least a 10 year lease with them because mm -hmm. uh, the state doesn't, DCEO doesn't want us improving a building that we're leaving next year. So right. they, they want some commitment and consistency, which we're mm -hmm. in the process of talking to the county about doing. Okay, thank you. Yes, Grace. Thank you. Thanks for the information about that. Um, so it seems like so you guys applied, ILEAS. Right, mm -hmm. and the city was just selected as the pass through for the money to come, Correct. right? By the General Assembly. Okay, and um, you said that you'll be seeking other funds, is that right? Because my question is, with this not covering the entirety of the project, uh, where would that, do you plan for that money to come from? And more specifically, just relevant question of it's not expected to come from the city of Urbana, right? No, we would, we are not, I never say never. But we're, we're not planning on coming to see Urbana for any of this. I'm working with uh, the federal grants, state grants, general assembly, private. Uh, we're trying to do A before we do B. Uh, we, I want to get this project done because we may find when we get into this and you start pulling stuff up, you find other problems. So we wanted to get this foundational work done before we started seeking uh, other work. We're engaging a, a local Urbana architect right now to do a feasibility study on this phase and the next phase and that's supposed to be done the 15th of December. We'll have that available for the city to look at because we kind of, you know, we've done a, an economic impact study that we brought in 41 million dollars to the city local economy since we opened this between folks renting hotel rooms and our salaries and vendors and you know, we, we look at this as an economic investment as well, but we're trying to get this part done first before we start dreaming about phase two. Thank you. And then my other question was more on the city end. Um, just want to check that we have the staff capacity to do this administrative work of this grant. Um, yes, we will. With the additional staff that you approved in the budget this year, that will help cover this grant. Is it additional Sorry. staff in your department? I thought that was HR and others. Is community development impacted by those we, changes? Um, in the 2023 budget, a position was added, a grants position was added to help administer all grants throughout the city. Okay. And then um, in the resolution, it mentions that the city will abide by the terms and conditions provided by DCEO. Mm -hmm. um, so I just feel the uh, you know, an obligation to ask um, what those are. I don't know if I need or will understand all the ins and outs, but just that you understand them and feel that um, your department has the capacity to administer those within those terms and conditions. Yes, we do. We have a positive working relationship with, with DCO and um, they're helping us. Jim and I've had a conference call with them a couple weeks ago to navigate some of the intricacies of this grant. So yes, I do feel we have the capacity. And to just jump in, Ileas, is a completely grant funded organization. We manage federal grants mm -hmm. since 2004 when I started there. Uh, that's all we do. We have a very healthy grant uh, finance section and I think we can work together. I, I think we'll, we'll get most of the work done so that when it gets to the city, it will be a minimal impact. That's, that's my goal. Thank you. Stranger. I just more so had like a procedural question, like since these two resolutions are, can we just bundle them? Well, I think or we have they to have to do it separately? The, the grant has to be accepted before we can enter into the IGA, so that's why we gotcha. did them separately. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, well, else? do you want a motion? I sure do. All right, yeah. <laughs> all right. I move resolution number 2022-11089R, resolution authorizing acceptance of a DCEO grant, Illinois Law Enforcement Alarm System Rehabilitation Project to City Council with a recommendation for approval, no, on the consent agenda. Oh, that's that so nice. The consent agenda. Who seconded? James, thank you. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, all in favor? I mean, discussion. <laughs> discussion? Okay, then all in favor? 
Aye. 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 Any nays? Great. It, it passes. Thank you very much. Okay, next, our resolution number 2022-11-089R, resolution authorizing the acceptance of a DCEO grant, that's Illinois Law Enforcement Alarm System Rehabilitation Project, and Sheila is here to help us understand this. Hello, Sheila. Good evening. Um, thank you. The city of Urbana received notice from the state of Illinois that during the um, General Assembly funding this year, they awarded $3 million um, to be passed through the city of Urbana to ILEAS for rehabilitation of their building. And so um, we have allocated 2975000 to the rehabilitation project and kept 25000 for the administrative costs for Urbana staff to implement the, the reporting and um, grant process. Are there any questions for Ms. Dodd? Chandra. Um, rehabilitation as far as like uh, construction? Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Great. And Jim Page is here from ILEAS to answer any questions, specific questions about what type of uh, rehab they're looking at doing. Sure, I would like to hear about it, thank you. <laughs> okay <clears throat> we this is the old champaign county nursing home uh, we moved in there in 2008 and at the time had a 3.2 million dollar grant to convert that nursing home from a nursing home into a training center for public safety and homeland security um, it's been fine for 18 years, but our operation has expanded so much and the training has become so wide. Uh, we now have our Urbana adult education classes for certified nursing assistants there. Head Start uses us. It's not just law enforcement. We've really expanded our footprint in the training uh, arena. <clears throat> we don't do the training, we host it. We operate the building. Uh, so uh, we're uh, working with the General Assembly, uh, work with Senator Scott Bennett got $3 million uh, put in the uh, budget this year, and somehow they put in the city of Urbana to get the grant for us. We've been working together. I mean, I used to work here. I think we have a good working relationship, and uh, uh, you folks are taking, in, as part of this agreement, $25,000 uh, for administrate, management and administrative fees. Uh, we're going to use the other $2.9 million for really exciting stuff like asbestos abatement that has to be done. Uh, we abated asbestos in the areas of the building that we're in now, but we're expanding into other wings. We have to do asbestos abatement. There's HVAC upgrades that have to happen. Uh, the parking lot needs rehabilitated. Uh, there's nothing really fancy with this, but uh, things have to be done. We're going to, and when this project is over, we're going to be seeking further money to build out uh, the rest of the building. But we have to get the foundation of the building fixed before we uh, move into any improvements past that. James? Yeah, thank you for coming tonight. Um, uh -huh. Do you own the building or no, do you Cham rent it from Champaign County? Champaign County, we, we, are, uh, we have a long-term lease. We've had a lease with them for 18 years. And, no, 2007 to now 15 years. Okay. And we're in the process of signing a 10-year extension on that. Uh, and they're part of the uh, design process. And did, did the original funding to rehab it for your use come through the city of Urbana or did it go no. through the it Champaign the, County? Or it was the, a federal homeland security grant that came through the Illinois Emergency Management Agency oh, okay. to ILEAS. We subgranted it to the county to do the work. This one came differently, so. I'm, uh, I'm not asking you to explain how it happened this way, but <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just curious. Yes, because that's, that's I, I how I seem to recall that it was the county's property that it you is. were releasing. Okay. And we have discussed with them, uh, not in any detail, uh, ownership at some point, but right now the grant requires, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we have a, at least a 10-year lease with them because mm -hmm. uh, the state doesn't, DCEO doesn't want us improving a building that we're leaving next year. So right. they, they want some commitment and consistency which we're in the process of talking to the county about doing. Okay, thank you. 
Yes, Grace. Thank you. Thanks for the information about that. Um, so it seems like so you guys applied ILEAS, right? Mm -hmm. And the city was just selected as the pass through for the money to come, Correct. right? By the General Assembly. Okay. And um, you said that you'll be seeking other funds. Is that right? Because my question is with this not covering the entirety of the project, uh, where would that? do you plan for that money to come from? And more specifically, just relevant question of it's not expected to come from the city of Urbana. Right? No, we would, we're not, I never say never, but we're, we're not planning on coming to the city of Urbana for any of this. I'm working with uh, the federal grants, state grants, general assembly, private. Uh, we're trying to do A before we do B. Uh, we, I wanna get this project done because we may find when we get into this and you start pulling stuff up you find other problems so we wanted to get this foundational work done before we started seeking uh, other work we're engaging a, a local urbana architect right now to do a feasibility study on this phase and the next phase and that's supposed to be done the 15th of december we'll have that available for the city to look at because we kind of you know we've done a, an economic impact study that we brought in 41 million dollars to the city local economy since we opened this between folks renting hotel rooms and our salaries and vendors and you know we, we look at this as an economic investment as well but we're trying to get this part done first before we start dreaming about phase two thank you and then my other question was more on the city end um just want to check that we have the staff capacity to do this administrative work of this grant um, yes, we will. With the additional staff that you approved in the budget this year, that will help cover this grant. Is it additional Sorry. staff in your department? I thought that was HR and others. Is community development impacted by those changes? We, um, in the 2023 budget, a position was added, a grants position was added to help administer all grants throughout the city. Okay. And then um, in the resolution, it mentions that the city will abide by the terms and conditions provided by DCEO. Mm -hmm. um, so I just feel a, you know, an obligation to ask um, what those are. I don't know if I need or will understand all the ins and outs, but just that you understand them and feel that um, your department has the capacity to administer those within those terms and conditions. Yes, we do. We have a positive working relationship with DCEO. And, um, they're helping us. Jim and I have had a conference call with them a couple weeks ago to navigate some of the intricacies of this grant. So yes, I do feel we have the capacity. And to just jump in, ILEAS is a completely grant funded organization. We manage federal grants mm -hmm. since 2004 when I started there. Uh, that's all we do. We have a very healthy grant uh, finance section and I think we can work together. I think we'll, we'll get most of the work done so that when it gets to the city, it will be a minimal impact. That's, that's my goal. Thank you. Stranger. I just more so had like a procedural question, like since these two resolutions are, can we just bundle them? Well, I or think we have, they to, have to do it separately. The, the grant has to be accepted before we can enter into the IGA. So that's why we gotcha. did them separately. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, well, do you want a motion? I sure do. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I move resolution number 2022-11089R, resolution authorizing acceptance of a DCEO grant, Illinois Law Enforcement Alarm System Rehabilitation Project to City Council with a recommendation for approval. No, on the consent agenda. Oh, that's that second. Oh, nice. Consent agenda. Who seconded? James, thank you. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, all in favor? I mean, discussion. <laughs> discussion? Okay, then all in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Great, it, it passes, thank you very much. So next, and I guess this is the cousin of the one we just did, okay. Resolution number 2022 11-090. R, a resolution approving the subrecipient grant agreement with the Illinois Law Enforcement Alarm System, Ileas, and Sheila is continuing to give us information. 
So since City Council approved acceptance of the grant two seconds ago, um, we now am asking to enter into a funding agreement with the ILEAS to implement the grant. Um, the grant agreement is an attachment to it will be the final grant that we receive from DCEO, um, which we'll expect to get any time. So um, really that's, that's the extent of it. Okay, so these are Siamese twins. Um, are there any questions for Sheila or okay Grace thank you um, I'm not sure if it's just the printed one I didn't check digitally but there's an attachment a budget and grant documents right that is what we're still working with DCEO to to get the final pieces of and when we do it'll be attached to this as an exhibit like by next week or after it's officially passed well I hope by next week but DCEO is not real quick in answering some questions so uh, but but the final agreement that the mayor we asked the mayor to sign will have that document attached thank you any more questions for Sheila or mr. page James I'll go ahead and make a motion I'm ready I pause to see if anybody else <laughs> had a question <laughs> uh, I move resolution number 2022-11-090 uh, R a resolution approving the subs the sub recipient grant agreement with the Illinois Law Enforcement Alarm System, ILEAS. And do we have a I'll second. on the consent agenda? To, yes, for okay. approval on the consent agenda. Thank you. And I'll second. Okay, Chandra uh, James moved it for consent agenda and Chandra has seconded. Any discussion? Wonderful. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Okay. Next is um, council input and communications. Anyone have any communications or input? All right. Seeing none. I think we have an adjournment and our business is taken care of. Thank you very much. Meeting adjourned. All right, and now we have council input and con communication. Oh, staff report. Oh, I'm sorry, staff report. I forgot we moved that. ARPA update. And Will is here to give us all that information. Hello, Will. <laughs> Alrighty. Waiting um, with bated breath. What? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so I'm here to give an update on our ARPA process. So the application period closed on November 16th. So that kind of brings us to our next step, which is getting to funding the concept plan or the goals of the concept plan um, based off the applications we received. So if you remember, the concept plan kind of ends on an open ended note. We have eight funding goals. Um, that's kind of where it is so to kind of provide a little bit of you know structure in terms of the schedule and the format um, we kind of have a proposed um, process in front of you um, to kind of get us to awarding a fund so um, you know since figuring out what the city council actually wants to do could be you know difficult to con get consensus I just wanted to come to everybody kind of make sure we get the process done squared away on the front end um, and then we can kind of go through that and you know start digging through the projects so just kind of some real brief update or summary. Um, we got 48 projects submitted um, at the deadline. A lot of them came in in the last minute, so our friends at the RPC were kind of I think, busy at the last minute. Um, especially, they did a great job, um, especially with the Thanksgiving break, turning around and giving, going through each project real quickly to kind of get that preliminary review, preliminary, peel, uh, <laughs> cursory review um, <laughs> to make sure that they were actually ARPA eligible. So going through that, they found two projects that um, based off what they submitted just weren't ARPA eligible through the federal guidelines. And then remaining from there, we have 46 projects, 41 were from outside agencies, and those projects are requesting 35 million. And then there's five city of Urbana projects that are requesting 3.8. And just for reference, we have $10 million to give out. So there's a lot of projects and a lot of things to go through. So with regards to the schedule, um, I sent everybody kind of an email earlier today. 
Um, the first step, the preliminary review, we have that done. The next deadline that we're trying to achieve, and I would say the schedule, you know, we try to be thoughtful and, you know, trying to get this done. And, well, the, the proposed schedule is a very tight turnaround time, so um, we definitely can't go on a shorter time timeline than what's in front of everybody. Um, but, you know, we can always go longer. There's no, there's no hard deadline. This is just kind of keeping the ball rolling at um, a quick pace. So the best hope is to get the review in the, of the applications done by December 7th by our, all the folks who are reviewing them. And then from there, the week of the 12th, we'll have a bunch of presentations scheduled. So at the regular meeting on Monday, we would present the city applications, and that's just city staffs used to coming to Mondays, and that makes the following days a little bit easier. And then starting that Tuesday, we would have a special council meeting with the first third. That special count council meeting would be extended to the next two days. So each day would have one third of the 41 applications. So that's 13 or 14 a day. Um, and then after that, I kind of identified the Monday the 19th as an open-ended discussion, you know, with no action item, just kind of discussing the next steps and how we want to proceed from there. So for, as far as the reviews go, um, every application will have at least four reviewers. The RPC is reviewing the city applications, and the city has a team of reviewers who are reviewing all the outside entities. So the goal, again, is to get that in the 7th. And by the 7th, um, when that hopefully would come out at the very latest with the packets, you'd have all the scores, some more information about the projects, how much they're requesting. Um, so you, you know, more information about all the projects would come at that time. And then from there, we have our special council meeting. Um, so being a special council meeting continued um, helps minimize the logistics, um, especially the public input if there was a lot of it. There's lots of opportunities to have public input. Um, so what we're suggesting is to you know, limit the public input at those three meetings. Um, just so that we can get through all those presentations in a timely manner each night. So each meeting would start at 7. We do have other meetings in council chambers earlier, so you can't really start earlier. And I believe there's the council rule that has 11 o'clock as a hard stop. So um, we are time bound, so it, it, we do want to be very um, strict in our time allotment. To, so to that end, um, you'll kind of see what I've proposed as the presentation format, which would be 12 minutes per presentation, with the first half being the applicant presenting and one thing I think what we like to do when we're doing purchases is, you know, the interviews or the presentations that we have are, are not a straight regurgitation of what they submitted. Um, so I've kind of put down three kind of key questions that I think supplement what they've put down in their applications um, without being necessarily redundant. So the three questions that I have are, what will the lasting impact of the project be after the ARPA funds run out? Kind of getting to, you know, the one-time nature of the funds. Um, why, why would the project be the best use of city ARPA funds? And then why are you confident that you can use these funds in accordance with federal guidelines and achieve demonstrable results in the required timeline? So this gets to um, the fact that, you know, at the end of the day, if they don't perform in accordance with federal rules in an appropriate manner, the city would end up being on the hook for that. So if we gave away money to somebody and they failed, um, we would have to, you know, tentatively repay um, those funds. So we do want to make sure that all the applicants have that capacity to do these projects or will be able to build that capacity. So that's kind of um, what I, we have, I have down for the, the presentation part and the last half, the remaining six minutes, would just be an opportunity for questions and answers. Um, to make that go quickly, I, you know, have um, kind of proposed that it would just be in sequence. Um, the mayor, Ward 1, Ward 2, Ward 3, just so there's not the back and forth um, to eat up into those precious few minutes that we have for the Q&A. Um, and then at the conclusion of the meeting, there's always, you know, the council can always send more questions, then we can deliver those to all the projects and applications and get some responses there. Um, but there's just a little bit limited amount of time in the meeting to actually ask. So um, a couple other quick things. I think um, one way we can try to decrease the logistical time in those meetings is um, not having slides, I think, um, I don't know what everybody's thoughts on that. I think people tend to use slides as a crutch, so I don't know if I want to kick the crutch out right before they present, but I think at the very least we'd have a minimum amount of slides so everybody's not pressing through, kind of trying to read it, everything. Um, so I was thinking three slides max, kind of pairs with three questions, and then there would be format requirements and they would have to send that in well in advance so that we could have it all ready to go. Um, and then following the presentations, the first post-presentation deliberation meeting, um, there's no set format, although I'm happy to provide any, you know, 
um, rubric. I mean, we'll have the initial scoring. One thing that um, I think I'd like to give to you is kind of a rubric based off those additional questions, and then you know we can package that, all that up and see if there's any trends. Um, but there's no official format for that, at least at this point, for that first meeting following all the presentations. So that's kind of the rundown um, in a very, sorry if I brushed through that, but that's kind of the process from here to there. Are there any questions or concerns about that process or as proposed? Any questions for Will? Chandra. Um, I, I like the format. I think it's very concise and you know, you make do with the time that we have. Um, question though, um, will we, so what we'll get in the packets on the tw uh, 12th or the 7th or 8th? Um, I think I had so this, yeah. Whenever those packets come out, will it be the entirety of those ARPA projects or would it be like a summary kind of thing of what they're asking for? So it will be, I mean, at the very least a summary, um, we can probably um, do all of it as well. It is a lot. We try to structure the application, um, you know, with question base so that hopefully we're working with the software, but it should generate nice reports where you can see all the questions. Um, but if you, everybody wants to see everything, um, then we can find a way to include all that, whether it's, you know, being able to have view it on the software that we use or the old fashioned way of printing it all out. Hopefully not that way, but, yeah. um, if you want to see everything, we can make that available. Okay. I just think uh, seeing their packet will help us formulate questions and it'll be more like faster at, when they present if we have questions ahead of time. Mary Ellis. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just thinking kind of along the lines that Chandra was saying in terms of what would be most useful. Obviously, having access to all of the the applications electronically and not not printed, I think, would be helpful. I know that there's a. Are you guys using the grant management software? Is that how you guys collected them? Yeah, it's through Neighborly. There, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so having access to that, I, I do know that when I worked with Brendan and. Uh, Sheila before they just had like a spreadsheet and we we it was like a it was all the questions in the rubric all the people who applied how much money they asked for um, that was very helpful just so that you can see it in one big picture exactly what was going on I don't I know that there's short time so I'm not saying that you have to do that but some way of summarizing some of the information to make it a little easier to digest I think would be helpful I don't know how to make it easy on you guys um, if you have a final rubric scoring sheet, maybe just having all those printed out for the, for the 46. Some, some way of, of uh, putting that information in, in a smaller chunk. Yeah, I know the, at the very least, um, you know, it'll kick out a scoring report so you can see where, how every application scored, where it scored what. Um, through the report builder tool that this software has, you can kind of try to draw all you know, the narrative responses to questions is to, that kind of gets uh, an unwieldy spreadsheet that it generates. Um, so there's probably, you know, the best way to do that is probably um, selected ones, but then if everybody can view the entire the application, then that's a little bit lower stakes on what's included and what's not. Grace. Thanks. Thanks for the update on this and the preliminary reviews. Um, I agree, I think that summary information of the projects and how they've been eventually reviewed will be helpful and also having the full applications in their entirety is something that I've uh, requested from the get-go and I would still like to have access to those. Um, a few other questions. The post-presentation deliberation, that will be a public forum, right? Yeah, that would just be an item on the regular Committee of the Whole meeting on Monday the 19th. I see. Um, and as far as slides, I hear the concern that it can um, take some time back and forth, make things a little more difficult. Um, but I'm in support of allowing people to use slides and just being sure that they're, you know, sent in ahead of time, preloaded and all that so it doesn't take more time. Uh, but I think that really is important um, for myself as a visual learner and for anyone else who would like to share photos or things that they feel um, are really important or to stay organized. I wouldn't want to say that slides aren't allowed. 
Um, I was wondering if you could clarify the application. So you said 46 or 48 total, two weren't uh, federally ARPA eligible. So 46 remaining. And did you say 41 presentations? Is that excluding the city proposals? So the city proposals will be presented on the regular meeting on the 12th. Um, so we have five city applications that will go Monday the 12th. And then the 41 will be divided at the special council meeting, which will take place over a period of three days. So that was just, you know, try to minimize those three days worth. It was easy to take the city folks and put them on Monday, which the city folks are all, you know, allegedly available for anyways. Okay, thank you. And then the last thing I wanted to bring up was potential conflict of interest. Um, I know that I'll have um, an organization proposing one that I'll need to abstain from, and I think other council members likely will as well. Um, so I'm wondering about how we're going to do that, because I think it's important that in that sense we take each proposal one by one so that half of us don't have to abstain from voting on everything altogether. But I think it's also important because it does play into a big picture. It's not like these are isolated things. We have to think about an overall total and how it fits together. So I'm curious on how we intend to do that um, with clear conflicts of interest outside of the city. And then I'm also still not entirely sure how or if it applies with conflicts of interest for the city applying for ARPA ones. That just seems weird for me to abstain from a nonprofit that I'm involved with and then vote on city requests. So um, those are just some things I think that need to be considered. So not being uh, an expert on, you know, the conflict of interest as far as council members go, um, the, the city staff is providing the reviews when we provide access to the application material. That itself, um, you know, while, you, you know, council may review as much as you want, um, we're not asking council to go through and give scores um, at that particular point. Um, and I think th it would be the final vote and where it matters about any particular conflicts of interest. And then... <coughs> Um, at there, I'll stop at that because I don't, you know, um, I don't want to say anything I don't know too much about. But depending on the nature of the conflict of interest, and we can talk this through with the city attorney. Sometimes the way you address it is by disclosing it, so that everybody knows. Oh, you have a special affinity for this for this organization because you're on their board or whatever it is, and everybody can collectively decide. But we're comfortable with you voting anyway because of what the the, the challenge that you articulated, which is this isn't a one-off thing. It's part of a package, and how do you navigate that? So we can talk to the city attorney and see if disclosure would be an adequate way of um, handling it. Because unless someone's going to has a like a personal interest in the the money, I think it's it, there's an attenuation of the conflict. I think so. We can talk to him about that and get in and get more information at a subsequent meeting. Chandra. So I already know that I can't make one of the evenings. Um, I, I guess will it be recorded and advertised like most? city not advertised but recorded and uh, broadcast like so I can go like the next day and watch it and like if I have any questions after watching it I can send to you and you send to the correct it's been scheduled UPTV so okay. I believe it'll be available live um, and then just like any other council meeting gotcha. it will be you know you can record it so related to that it, you know will be noticed um, the breaks will be noticed um, so if we, you know, after 14 and 28, on the agenda, it'll say the notice, so then we will have to take a break at that point. And then, um, you know, even though you may watch it later, we still do need a quorum for those meetings to happen. So uh, we did do the doodle poll, and all those meeting dates, everybody, you know, there was enough council members who said they could attend. Um, but so just, we do, if you did say you could attend, you do have, you should attend so that we can have a quorum. Take the chair for me. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you, James. Go ahead. <laughs> can uh, can we work with um, UPTV to make sure that the turnaround time on the videos for those meetings will be really quickly? If we're going to be talking about it on the 19th, um, there have been a couple of times where I think the video has taken four or five days before it's available. And so we will really need the Thursday meeting available as soon as possible. Of course, the Tuesday and Wednesday too, but, but um, for, for Chandra or anybody else who has to miss for something that comes up, we'll, we'll need to be able to watch that 
and it might it might be challenging because we're going to talk about it on Monday. So if you're listening to it over the weekend and you develop questions, that doesn't leave a lot of space, a lot of room for error. And you know that nineteenth meeting. Um, you know, I did the nineteenth because it's always nice to keep the momentum rolling. Um, you know, if it the discussion is you know has to wait and for more time review, there's that is not a hard deadline to have that particular discussion then. Okay. But I'll I have a note. Thanks. Uh, I will take the chair for Sharice, and the chair recognizes Sharice. Thank you. I have a question um, regarding. Okay, so it's 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, right? Yeah. Okay. So my question is: Are the, are the people who are presenting that night? I know you said the city is going to be on the 12th. So on the 13th, 14th, and 15th, are the the presenters going to be scheduled, or do they just show up? Will we have um, something, or, you know, where you let them know this is the night you are scheduled to mm -hmm. present, and we'll know that that's the night they're pre scheduled to present, and so on and so forth. Yeah, it'll be a, a thick, a preset order, and then we'll communicate with everybody. Um, I think we told so we told everybody those are the three dates. Um, after today, we can communicate with them um, what the specific order is. Um, I've been going trying to go through them real briefly, just to kind of get the thematic ideas of where they are, um, so that. Roughly speaking, we can try to have the same themes um, presenting each day. So um, it might not work out based off of the number of applications each day, and um, you know I'm not reviewing them in detail, so they might be you know a little off from the actual project. But that's the idea is to kind of break it up into three days with similar types of projects, and then just tell them when they present, and then they'll show up on their correct day. Okay. Also, on in that those three days, and we're trying to get through 40 people. 41 in three days, correct. 41 in three days and therefore I guess what I'm wondering in three hours time that gives them you said about 12 minutes yes okay and all right I just I'm just trying to get the logistics there okay thank you well since I have the chair I can say that I did the math and it's 2.73 hours is what we need to get through um, the 41 over three nights so there's very little wiggle room with the 12 minutes is what I'm saying. All right, I give up the chair back to Sharice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mary Alice. And is there <clears throat> any more questions for Will? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Now it's the fun part. <laughs> oh, yeah.